Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. This is Sam I.B. reporting for TheMediaSpeaks.com. And guys, I'll tell you what, we have a, a, a lot of news tonight. For those of you that are live, you're really going to be happy because this is going to cover a lot of ground, an awful lot of ground. I want to dedicate the show to the behind-the-scenes queen. Have you ever tried to set up a tripod by yourself with two cameras on it? It's not easy. And I, I, I depending on how I did with the lighting, I this, like, the computer is actually behind me. It's not... So I'm reaching in all directions all by myself here. So we will see how it goes. The behind-the-scenes queen has taken flight. She's on vacation. All right, guys. TheWashingtonPost.com. Brazil's president condemns NSA spying. This is something else right here. This is really something, and I'll tell you why. Um, America has always, always been the the hallmark of what a republic should be. As DLA points out rather correctly, and I think I mentioned it too on a show, uh, not a democracy, a republic that we do live in, Mr. President. Um, we've always been the beacon of free speech. Now, it can be argued whether or not we've always done it. No nation on earth has ever done every great thing that it says that it's done, and uh, none of the bad things. By and large, America's done a lot of good in the world up until recently. I'd say, uh, and by recently I mean definitely most, most, not all, most, not all of our military actions since World War II. Uh, should World War II have ended differently, we didn't really need to bomb Japan, they were going to surrender. But I mean, we'd all be speaking German today if it wasn't for America. So I mean, let's put it in perspective. The trouble is, right now, America is looking like some of the regimes that we have always spoken out against. Brazil had to put us in our place. And guys, I, I openly say, I love my country. That's why I do this. Because I think that a majority of the people that run our country love themselves. And I mean, I, I, I'm narcissistic to some degree. That's what happens when you're raised in a public school system. But I mean, these people aren't just happy to, to be rich. They want, they want it all. Okay? Everybody's out there to some degree for themselves. And I'm going to openly admit, I fight those demons all the time. I'm very much like that. I'm not some saint on here preaching to you. It's that level of greed that just takes it to the next level. And you're seeing it with this spying thing, needing to control everything, even with allies. Now, granted, maybe there's some great thing we don't know about how Brazil was spying. and We, we, we can't relate it, but you've got to believe that you know, we had to do it. Anybody believe that? No. Washington Post um, by uh, Carl Lynch. United Nations. Brazilian President Dilma Rousseff on Tuesday delivered a stinging rebuke of electronic espionage by the National Security Agency telling a gathering of world leaders at the UN General Assembly that American eavesdropping constitutes a breach of international law in an effort, in an affront, excuse me, to Brazil's sovereignty. America's spying efforts pose a threat to democracy throughout the world, Rosa said, and she proposed that the United Nations establish legal guidelines to prevent cyberspace from being used as a weapon of war. Did you ever think that you would hear a day that somebody would have to want something like this to be passed in the UN because the United States... I mean, everybody does things behind the scenes, but, I mean, to this degree? No, right? I don't think every nation does this. I really don't. I'm sure they all do, again, at some level, but not like this. Without the right of privacy, there is no real freedom of speech or freedom of opinion, and so there is no actual democracy, Rosa said. And without respect for a nation's sovereignty, there is no basis for proper relations among nations. Well, she doesn't know that we're a republic either. But she's right here. And it, it, it shames me that we need to be preached to when we, we were the beacon of this. What's happened to us? Who have we elected? I didn't elect him. 
A series of disclosures about U.S. surveillance in Brazil based on leaks by a former NSA contractor, Hero Edward Snowden, have caused a furor in that country. Earlier this month, Rosef canceled a state visit to Washington over the revelations. Those who want a strategic partnership cannot possibly allow reoccurring and illegal action to go on if they want, as if they were an ordinary practice, she said. Uh, she demanded an apology and a guarantee that such actions will not be repeated. That is a quote. Brazil knows how to protect itself, she said. Brazil does not provide shelter to terrorist groups. We are a democratic country. In other words, we are your friend. This is like, this is like going through your best friend's wallet when there's $3 in it that he would have given you. This is not a, an enemy state. You could argue if we did this through Iran or, you know, what I mean, yeah, of course it's wrong. But you could argue, you can see the logic. The threat of Brazil. Brazil needed spied on. All right, guys, um, this is Sam I.B. reporting for the Media Speaks. About to tell you a little bit about Sam I Am. I got a message here. Is somebody trying to watch me on Facebook? Uh, how do you watch this show? Um... You need a webcam, my friend. If you have a webcam, hop in. Uh, Blurt me again, and I will make sure that we talk. I would love anybody with a webcam to join me. Uh, until that happens, I'm going to go on. Sam I.B. reporting on a Sam I Am, who does not like green eggs, ham, or Obamacare. It's Ted Cruz and his kids. Check this out. Business Insider. <clears throat> If I can get my mouse to work. During his marathon speech on the Senate floor Tuesday in opposition to funding the Affordable Care Act in the continuing resolution, Senator Ted Cruz took a break to read bedtime stories to his two young girls. He said that his two daughters were watching C-SPAN 2 at home. He told them to turn on the station at 8 p.m. Cruz read his daughters verses from the Bible and then moved on to Dr. Seuss' classic green eggs and ham. Jason Johnson, Cruz's chief campaign strategist, tweeted a photo of Cruz's daughters watching the video on television at home. Um, that's great. That's great. And for those of you that don't know, he's speaking non-stop in an effort, and you can't really do a filibuster because the vote's going to happen tomorrow no matter what. But he's making a stand, and he's standing up for this because uh, he's adamantly against Obamacare. And I'll get to my, my take on this in a minute. For those of you that watch the show, you already know. Um... He can't stop speaking, because if he does, and gives up the floor, then it's officially done. Even though it's not a true filibuster. Um, filibusters, of course, when you stand as Ron Paul, Rand Paul did, and um, you, you're doing so blocks a vote. This vote's going to happen no matter what. A lot of this may be posturing for the president. You know what? At least he's got good posture. Uh, below is a video of Cruz's dramatic rendition on the Senate floor. There's a video on it. He concluded by telling his daughters, Daddy's going to go home soon to read to you in person. And yes, green eggs and ham will now forever be in the Senate record. Guys, let me tell you something. Every conservative, libertarian-minded person that you find is pretty much... Here you go, Mr. Cruz. Uh, you pretty much find they're against Obamacare. And... See, here's my take on it, and I've said this before, so I'm not going to elaborate and go over it so that all my regular viewers fall asleep. The problem here is that it's mandatory. States should set up some kind of a, an insurance program for the uninsured, and each state should be allowed to vote on those laws. I believe that health care is a human right, and that everybody should have access to health care. Because if you have a sick nation, <clears throat> then you do not have a, a, a nation that's going to run as productively as it could. This is what we need, people. This is why we need to stop calling all Republicans and Democrats the same. Uh, most of them are invisible. When we do find someone that stands up for liberty, stand up with them. Because what Obama is doing is not covering everyone. He's making it mandatory that everybody gets covered the way he wants them to. Now, I'm, I can bend on my uh, extreme libertarianism uh, enough to, <clears throat> to say that I think health care is a human right. I also think it should be a state-by-state -state issue. 
I think you'd be allowed to opt out of it, and then if you do and you become sick, then I think you're on your own. I, I, I am. I draw the line there. But of course, I, I, I'm much, much closer to the left on this issue than the far right. My problem is that Obamacare is a terrible, terrible, terrible idea because of the way that, I mean, it's going to triple some people's uh, expenditures on insurance. It didn't bring rates down, as he promised. It made them go up. And uh, that is not what a more libertarian-minded president would do, someone like Cruz. And maybe we should look into, say, these kinds of things. Again, if it was up to me, I would like to see Napolitano or Justin Amash run. Uh, would I vote for Rand? It depends, probably. But I'm the only person I think at the media speaks that would, and I'm on the fence with it myself. Um, but I'll get into that for those of you that want to know on another show. I have a reason that I would likely vote for him under the right circumstances. Put this down. You know, maybe not since I have no idea how to run my own computer again. There we go. PrisonPlanet.com, Paul Joseph Wilson, off-duty soldier armed with a handgun and saves hundreds of lives during mall siege. First time I heard this mall attack uh, that, uh, that, of course, by now I'm sure you all know. The first thing I thought was, these are people that would be alive if they were armed. There's, you, and I'm, I'm probably going to get to this on another show, but you can look it up. There's United Nations people wanting to disarm America as a human rights effort. D dumb. Um, and they point to all the other nations. <clears throat> they don't need these firearms. Well, I can think of some Kenyans that might have. Here's a positive story about guns that you're not likely to see in the U.S. corporate media pay much attention to. An off-duty SAS officer armed with a handgun saved a hundred lives during the terrorist siege at the Westgate shopping mall in Kenya. There's a video here, but I'm not going to post it because the guy doesn't want to be seen. And, <clears throat> I mean, he's already been seen on camera. I'm sure those that want to behead him, I know who he is, but I'm not going to help it along. So I didn't post the video. Uh, no affront to PJ Dub, who we love. The soldier was having a coffee with friends inside the mall when the attack began. The gun tucked into his waistband. The soldier returned to the building at least a dozen times to rescue hostages. He went back in 12 times and saved 100 people. Now, I like to think that I could be brave in such a situation, but going into that hellhole 12 times with people armed with guns, well, I mean, he's got a gun, but that's not the point. Uh, these people were impeccable shots. They were killing everyone that couldn't prove they were Muslim by knowing Mohammed's mother's name. And even those who did, probably wouldn't. You don't give up your religion that easily. They were slaughtering people. They were slaughtering children. They were throwing animals. These weren't even humans. Um, they should have had uh, Janet Reno firebomb the place like she did the Branch Davidians. At least they were humans and, uh, and not bothering anybody. They didn't deserve what they got. Uh, again, if she'd have done it, it would have hurt the innocents. I'm being facetious. My point is, there was scum, filth, with firearms in this mall just shooting everybody willy-nilly. This guy goes in there 12 Times. It says, imagine going back in there when you knew what was going on inside, a friend told the Daily Mail, labeling the soldier a hero. Well, that's the understatement of the year. British SAS forces regularly train and work in Kenya. The man's identity cannot be revealed for security reasons, although he was pictured escorting panicked hostages out of the building. Watson goes on, don't expect to see a story like this covered by the mainstream U.S. media which habitually shies away from examples that illustrate how firearms are routinely used for defensive purposes. It mentions two other cases. Uh, one was in March where a Texas boy who watched his sister and mother being raped during a home invasion by two men, who later abandoned the plan to murder the three victims because the boy was able to grab a handgun and send the two individuals fleeing. So now we have a mother, a sister, and a hundred people saved due to guns, all in one story, and I haven't been reading that long. Let's add some more, shall we? In May, a homeowner in Sharpstown, Houston, was assaulted by three robbers who broke into his house and shut him in a closet, unaware that the closet was where he kept his guns. That would have been a great Dunce Cap of the Month award. The man exited the closet, armed, and the robbers fled the scene. I'm looking up, people. It, it's, it's, 
Americans use guns to defend themselves against a confrontation with a criminal up to 2.5 million times a year. That means that every day in America, <clears throat> 6,800 people use guns to protect themselves. There are not 6,800 people murdered every day. Guns are doing a much better job than they are uh, being a negative impact on our lives. Well, and speaking of self-defense, go to BudK.com. No, don't just go to BudK. Go to the MediaSpeaks.com and click on BudK. Because when you do that and you purchase something from BudK, Media Speaks is able to grow. You get more stories. We have more time that we can dedicate to giving you a better looking show. Uh, with that in mind, let's check out some self-defense items here. <coughs> The Secure Pro Credit Card Lock Pick Set, $9.99. And they've got the uh, expandable baton, 26 inch, was $21, it's now $12.99. They got the Shock Light Stun Gun Flashlight, $54.99. It's a flashlight, it's a stun gun. You, uh, somebody walks up to you and uh, you can see them clearly. You're not just swinging this thing blindly. And I mean, it's useful. I mean, for day to day use, hopefully, you'll never have to shock someone. But if you do, don't you want to be prepared? Uh, the Night Watchman 100,000 volt stun gun. That's only $9.99. Ten bucks could save your lives. Uh, should I think you should get a gun? Of course I think you should get a gun. But there are places where you can't bring them. And that's when you go to the MediaSpeaks.com. That's when you click on Bud K. And that's when you get these things. I mean, no matter how concealed carry you are, and I'm in favor of it, uh, I'm in favor of open carry for that matter, but how many of you would like to see a drunk person carry a gun? Me either. In those instances, it's probably best for those people to have a taser or something. And those are items that you can get at that game. Infowars.com. We're going to go keep with the self-defense for just one more before we get on to some uh, news about the Pope, shall we? Indiana woman fends off carjackers with a gun. He said, oh, shh. And they ran. Last week, our... Kyle mentioned we all need to watch our P's and Q's so that we can get a further audience. And he's right. Last week, an Indianapolis woman was able to defend herself and her property by having a firearm at her disposal when she needed it the most. Carrie Bird just started law school and continues to work full-time, reported Indiana's Fox 59. Bird got home around 11.50 p.m. Wednesday, and she got out of her car and a group of three or four young guys approached her. Bird says one of them smiled before pulling a gun on her and then demanded her keys. What a... Mm. As she turned over the keys, she realized her costly possessions were about to be forfeited. It was then, Bird says, she remembered the firearm stored in her car's center console. Bird says she grabbed her gun and pointed it at him. Oh, but isn't a, isn't a person's first instinct to grab a gun when they have one because they, they want to shoot people? She almost forgot she even had hers. He said, oh, censored, Kyle. And they ran, Bird said. Police are asking for the public's help in identifying the roving band of teen miscreants. The one who pulled the gun is described as husky, wearing a black hoodie over a light shirt, <coughs> Fox 59 reported. As noted in the report, sponsored by the Justice Department, about 40% of criminals say that they had decided not to do a crime because they knew or believed that the intended victim was armed. Bird's tale, was, Bird's tale has earned a replace on the website gunsaveslives.net. Go, go to this site, <clears throat> gunsavelives.net. Stories of self it's a self stories of self defense map that she was put on, which pinpoints areas of the United States where crimes have been thwarted by responsible gun owners. The map depicts hundreds of instances in the United States in which guns are used to defend one's personal life or property, and uh, yes, it happened in Ohio where I'm at for my local listeners. Reuters.com, I'm going to go on to some news to end here, some Pope news. And this, see, I'm not Catholic, so I, I want some people's opinion on this that are, because I'm a little alarmed, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. I think it was the last Pope, the one that retired, <clears throat> that suggested that we should uh, pursue some kind of one-world currency. Right? Basically, a, a walk-in, for, for those of you that know the Book of Revelations. Well, this Pope says some really good things, 
And then some uh, things. Now, not being Catholic, I don't believe that he is the spokesman for God. But I've always grown up uh, with at least a, a respect for the position. As of lately, I've become very, very alarmed by, by what I've been reading uh, concerning the papacy lately. So what I'm going to do is give you the good and then give you the question, okay? And for those of you non-Christians, I'm not going to answer any hate Christianity comments. I'm having an intelligent conversation about news. I've already openly said that I am a Christian who is not Catholic, um, and I am not a role model for my religion either. But having said that, we're, we're going to discuss what he's saying here, not whether or not you believe in the Bible. We're not getting into that. We've done that on other shows. We will do it again. This is not one of them. Pope Francis made one of his strongest attacks on the global economic system on Sunday, saying it could no longer be based on the God-called money and urged the unemployed to fight for work. <clears throat> Francis, at the start of the day-long trip to the Sardinian capital, Cal Caligari, put aside his prepared text at a meeting with unemployed workers. Well, Obama couldn't do that. He needs a teleprompter. But the Pope did, in fact, put away his uh, sheet, including miners in hard hats who told him that their situation and told them, and he improvised, it said, for 20 minutes. Well, like I said, Obama couldn't do it. I find suffering here. It weakens you and robs you of hope, he said. Excuse me if I use strong words, but where there is no work, there is no dignity. That's important. Think about the number of people we have on welfare that we're not testing. I'm not talking about those who need it. We've given them a living based on nothing. And they have no dignity. And they act like they have no dignity by the things that they do to people. The number of crimes committed by healthy people on the SNAP card are off the charts. Every, if you look that up easily. And again, I'm not including those who genuinely need it. I, my, my ex was very much one of those people for a long time. He discarded his prepared speech after listening to Francisco Matana, a 45-year-old married father of three who lost his job when the alternative energy company, with an alternative energy company four years ago. Matana, his voice trembling, told the Pope <clears throat> that unemployment oppresses you and wears you out to the depths of your soul. The crowd of about 20,000 people in the square, it says, near the city port, chanted what Francis called a prayer for work, work, work. They cheered each time he spoke for the rights of workers and the personal devastation caused by joblessness. I'm going to go on. The Pope, who later celebrated Mass to some 300,000 <clears throat> people outside the city's cathedral, told them, we don't want this globalized economic system which does us as much harm, does us so much harm. Men and women have to be at the center of the economic system as God wants, not money. The world has become an idolater of this God called money, he said. Very good. Sardinia's coast is famous for its idyllic beaches, exclusive resorts, and seaside palatial residences of some of the world's richest people, including former Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi and a host of Hollywood actors. And it goes on. Okay, Th those are good words. I mean, those are very, very, very good words. And then there's this. <clears throat> the Telegraph. Pope Francis reaches out to atheists and agnostics. All right, that's good. Good. It's about not to be good. Pope Francis <clears throat> has struck a surprisingly conciliatory tone towards atheists and agnostics, saying that God will forgive them as long as they behave morally and live according to their consciences. Now... I already said we're not going to get into whether or not you believe it or don't believe it. I'm going to get into what the Bible says, and that's all we're going to talk about. We will have a religious discussion another day, as we have in the past. Deal? Good. Thank you. Um, the Bible says that Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the light, and no one gets to the Father except by me. Now, you can say you don't like that he said it, you can love that he said it, he said it. And as the Pope, he knows that Christ said it. Now, there are some people that believe that there are exceptions for uh, Jews. Uh, and whether or not you're one of those people that believe it, let's just open the safety net wide enough to say, okay, <clears throat> I, do I believe those when I get into it? Um, Jews 
are in our little safety net, and Christians are those who believe that Christ is God in human form, he died, and he rose himself from the dead. That is supposed to be where the historic Christian faith has always been. And you need to wonder when you hear this, if in fact, <clears throat> this includes them. Now, I'm personally of the belief that if someone has never heard of Christianity and they live a good moral life, yeah, of course, I, I think that that's, that's not the same as an open, deliberate rejection of Jesus Christ. I think if you know who he is and you willfully reject him, then I do not believe that the Bible says you're going to heaven. Now, for those of you that think it's all poppycock, that's not part of the discussion. What is part of the discussion is where is the outrage among Christians on this? The unprecedented gesture came <clears throat> as his incoming number two, the Vatican's newly nominated Secretary of State, said that the rule that priests should be celebrate was not a dogma of the Church and could be open for discussion. Okay, I get that. Francis, who was one praise for spontaneous and unusual moves during his six-month papacy, wrote a lengthy letter to a newspaper, La Repubblica, which the Italian Daily printed over four pages, including page one under the simple byline Francisco. God forgives those who obey their conscience, he wrote in the unprecedented letter, the latest example of the markedly different tone and the style from his predecessors that he has at last set since being elected in March. The 76-year-old pontiff was responding to editorials written in July and August by Ingenio Scalfari, an agnostic and the paper's founder, in which he asked whether the Christian God forgives those who do not believe and do not seek faith. McScalfari said he had not expected the South American Pope to respond so extensively and so affectionately in such a fraternal spirit. The Pope wrote, the question for those who do not believe in God is to follow their own conscience. Sin, even for the non-believer, is when one goes against one con one's conscience. Okay, it can be argued, but we're not beyond the pale of orthodoxy, as Hank Hanegraaff likes to say. <clears throat> to listen and follow your conscience means that you understand the difference between good and evil. He said that the mercy of God has no limits and encompassed even non-believers, but his remarks failed to impress the Italian Union of Atheists and Agnostics. Why should a non-believer seek the le le legitimization from the Pope, the association asked. I don't have a problem with what he said up until the point that you have just pretty much deviated from everything that the Bible has taught to invite people, and I invite everyone into the religion. I am not in favor of making anybody believe anything. But if I say that it's okay to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God if you're a Muslim, I have just spoken out against what the Muslims believe, and in essence what I have done is misrepresented them. Now, I think I should have the free speech to do so if I wanted to, which I don't. But that's kind of the analogy that points to some degree to what I think the Pope just did here. Uh, for those of you that would like to reply to this, I would love to know, because I haven't heard many people talking about it, and it seemed like a very big step. And this is important, because if the Pope is going to get wishy-washy on what he believes, then isn't there a chance that this Pope, or perhaps a future Pope that we don't even know who, of course, that's going to be yet, that he might go to such a degree to abuse this and to bring us into other things that weren't in the Bible. And soon we have this wishy-washy, all religions are the same thing. And, uh, you know, this is a slippery slope. And it can lead to, they could lead to being forced into a religion at some point if uh, the Catholic Church starts to absorb more totalitarian religions and belief systems even within itself. So, it's important. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Sam I. B. DeGangie signing off. Make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself. I've got a story going up about uh, an experience I had where the band uh, Passing Time that I am in was robbed. 
Also, make sure you go to the Charity Connection and donate money to Miss Dana Mobley Christ, who is beating lung cancer due to the money that we're donating to her. So please keep doing so. Good night, friends, and God bless.